illegal firearms continue to be a major headache for local police. Changes coming to Barbados trade policy. Broadcasting from our studios in the Pine St. Michael, this is CBC News Night, starting now. Good evening to you on this Saturday, August 10th. I'm Tisha Hines with News Night. Local police say their crime fighting efforts are bearing fruit, but tackling illegal firearms remains the biggest challenge. Commissioner of Police Richard Boyce made this point as police investigate a shooting death at Durant's Village, St. James. Anesta Henry reports. Commissioner of Police Richard Boyce is reporting crimes recorded for the year thus far are below last year's figures. And while commending the members of the service for working around the clock to fight crime, he says the battle against illegal firearms continues to be a major challenge. It is something that we know we have to do on a 24-hour basis. And we are well prepared for that fight. So we will continue and we will not stop until we deal with this situation and bring it fully under control. Yes, we are seeing a decline. But we don't just want to see a decline, we want to see the total non-existence of such offences occurring, that is firearms-related offences. So yes, we are satisfied the way the overall crime picture is, but there's that, there that one annoying factor, the factor of firearms, which is a constant headache for us. Mr. Boyce's comments come as police investigate the death of 23-year-old Jada Murray of Halls Village, St. James, who was found dead in the vicinity of a bar at Durant's Village about five minutes after nine Friday night. There are reports a number of masked men with guns opened fire on Murray, who was in the company of another male walking towards the bar. That man was injured and taken to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital for treatment. Police also report the perpetrators also opened fire on another man as they fled the scene. However, that man was an armed off-duty police officer. There was reportedly an exchange of gunfire resulting in two of the assailants being injured. However, they managed to flee the scene. Commissioner Boy says investigations into the incident are continuing. At this juncture, I wish to inform that the investigation is continuing into this matter which is currently at a delicate and sensitive stage. Hence, it will not be in the best interest of the investigation to give any further detail at this time as it relates to the way forward in bringing the perpetrators to justice. Turning his attention to the recently held Cricket World Cup and Crop Over Festival, the top cop has thanked his officers for their efforts to keep citizens and visitors safe. This part of the year it will be extremely busy for us. So again, I want to publicly commend each and every officer in the organization and also persons who would have come on board and partnered with us. That is persons from the Barbados Defense Force also. Commissioner Boy says the police service is already preparing for the Yuletide season. Anesta Henry, CBC News. The Cabinet of Barbados is set to review Barbados' trade policy. Minister of Industry, Innovation, Science and Technology, Marcia Cannell, made the announcement as she addressed the 60th anniversary celebration of the Barbados Manufacturers Association at Hayman's Market last evening. Ms. Cannell notes the initiative also gives the BMA the opportunity to help chart a course for the way forward and strengthen Barbados' position in the global marketplace. This is something that we expect to be able to do quickly. Uh, we expect to be able to engage all of our partners. We have a, a strong partnership and a good solid track record of working with the BMA uh, to be able to tease out and to really unpack what are the challenges that address us and how do we move from, from those minute things that we experience on the ground to having those informed trade policy. Ms. Cattell has congratulated the BMA for its work and its legacy in manufacturing in Barbados and the region, and says the organization will be included in the conversations with the government on the review. We think that this is critical because we realize that our trade agreements and our overarching trade policy emerged and was put together at a specific 
time in our economic and social history, and a specific time in the economic and social history uh, of the world. The geopolitics that obtained at the time have shifted slightly, I dare say, and continue to shift. Meanwhile, immediate past President John Marshall says the relationship shared with government is essential as they work together to achieve economic diversification. Also at the anniversary celebrations, a memorandum of understanding was signed between the BMA and a new e-commerce platform, Corner Store. The initiative will allow Barbadians across the diaspora to get Barbadian manufactured products within two business days. Founder Teddy Leon says the platform will be membership-based and will ensure that manufacturers meet national and international standards through its partnership with the BMA. And he adds they also have a new foothold in the manufacturing industry in Trinidad and Tobago. Mr. Leon says they will also be a raw material aggregator, which will allow for the purchase of raw materials at a discounted price, which will in turn benefit the customer. As a small business ourselves, we fully understand the challenges that small and medium-sized enterprises face, especially when it comes to expanding into global markets. This is why our approach is deeply collaborative. We want to work with you and not just be a service provider. We want to be a true partner. We understand the cash flow, we understand the cash flow constraints and the first time hurdles that you may encounter while trying to access the global markets. At Corner Store, we want to be the bridge that connects Barbados to the global market, ensuring that your products reach consumers worldwide. Coming up, a St. Michael community getting help from a private company with waste disposal. Just over a year ago, 60 students started bachelor degree programs offered by the Barbados Community College and Delaware State University. To date, 24 have enrolled in agricultural science, 12 in biology, 10 in chemistry, and 14 in mathematics. Some have made the president's list and the dean's list at the end of their first year. A celebration of excellence and awards ceremony was held on their behalf at the Barbados Community College. A second cohort of students has also been welcomed. Principal of the school, Annette Aline, has urged all of them to make good choices and continue to remove barriers that limit what they can do. The opportunity to study at Delaware State University is an investment. It is an investment. It is an investment in you. An investment where we expect you to learn, where we expect you to change the trajectory of your life, and where we expect that you will contribute to our national development. Vice President for Strategic Enrollment Management and International Affairs at Delaware State University, Antonio Boyle, says they're on a mission to ensure the students get the best preparation for their respective careers. The least we expect is for you to be successful. We want you to do your very best. We want you to be a part of a program that you can feel good about. And just know this much. If this were easy, you wouldn't be here. Because it was easy and free, you guys would not even show up, would you? Because it's free and it's easy, right? You wouldn't take that. But just know that we know, we know the programs are difficult. And the programs are island building programs. How do we get the very best folks in mathematics? biology, chemistry, and most importantly, agriculture, to ensure that the island has a sustainable crop of qualified people to do work. Residents in Bristol Road, Cave Hill, St. Michael, are cleaning up after themselves with the help of Island Skip Services. Impressed with the efforts of the residents, the company has entered into a public-private initiative, and the intention is to go into other communities across the island to ensure residents can discard of their bulk waste from now until Christmas. Communications consultant with Hague Communications, Joanne Haig, says she noticed the pile of garbage and an influx of mosquitoes on one of her visits. According to her, she spoke to some residents who said they needed help and the idea was birth. Skips will be delivered to the communities on Fridays and collected on Mondays, giving people in the area the entire weekend 
to get rid of the waste. One of them did say that he acted like Sanford and his son on his property. And I said, well, today we can be the Jeffersons. We're moving on up. No more Sanford and son. So I called Island Skit Services and um, Hay Communications. We decided to, to rent two skits. So they then, this was not supposed to be public. This was a private something. But then they asked if they can jump on board and be a part of this cleanup. And then the discussion went like, okay, well, perhaps we shouldn't only do this for KFL. We should offer this here for other areas. Ms. Haig believes communities can help by taking responsibility for their actions. If we keep asking the government to do things, guess what? They're going to have to get money to do it. Our taxes then will go up. So help me, help my list services, help the people, help with themselves by doing the right thing and cleaning up your community to avoid, or should I say minimize, the increased population of the mosquitoes, rats, cockroaches, things that will then ultimately lead you into the QBH, which is already strained. Resident Gail Greenwich says the cleanup is an excellent idea and should be duplicated across all 11 parishes. We welcome it with open hearts and open hands. And anything that we can do to help to put this community in a clean and clear environment is wonderful. I'm very happy that it's happening and we should have more of it. It should be a continual something to clean up the block and, you know, clean the area. Well, coming up next, the weekend sports with Anne-Marie Burke. Good evening with sports. I'm Anne-Marie Burke. In another rain affected day, West Indies lost first innings by 124 runs on what was day four of the first test against South Africa at the Queen's Park Oval in Trinidad and Tobago. Still with cricket, Karan Pollard played one of his trademark innings to help the Southern Braves secure a two-wicket victory over Rothman Powell and the Trent Rockets in the men's 100 at the Rose Bowl in Southampton today. The Rockets posted 126 for 8 from their 100 balls. Chris Jordan took 3 for 22. The Brave men then needed 99 balls to reach 127 for 8 thanks to Pollard's 45-run knock with five sixes and two fours. To Olympic news now, Masai Russell of the United States defeated pre-race favorite and the Olympic record holder Jasmine Camacho, Queen of Puerto Rico, in the final of the women's 100-meter hurdles. Russell finished the, crossed the finish line, that is, in 12.33 seconds, just 0.1 seconds ahead of France's Serena Samba Mahela, while Camacho Quinn was third in 12.36. Now, the United States of America set a new Olympic record in the men's 4 by 400 meter relay final. The new time is 2 minutes 54.43 seconds, with Botswana taking silver and Great Britain bronze. And in the final track event of Paris 2024, the women's 4 by 100 meter relay, the USA took home gold in a new area record of 3 minutes 15.27 seconds. The Netherlands took silver and Great Britain the bronze. Jamaica did not finish as they dropped the baton. And that's it for sports. And that's news. Thank you so much for joining us. Continue to enjoy your evening.